Today we're driving the new 2023 Genesis G90. This sees a pretty significant update for the 23 model year. It's powered by a 3.5 liter twin turbocharged V6 with an electric supercharger. It makes 409 horsepower, 405 pound feet of torque. It's all wheel drive. It has rear wheel steer, air suspension, an eight speed automatic transmission. And as you saw at the beginning of this video, automatically closing doors like a Rolls Royce. Um, pretty awesome update for this new G90. Love the forged carbon in this interior. Some of the new design elements like this two spoke steering wheel look really unique, really sharp. Let's walk you around this new G90, show what it looks like inside and out. We'll talk about what it's been like to live with this week and we'll take it for a drive. So yeah, let's start on the outside. Pretty impressive stuff, lots to go over in this new G90. You press the door button here, it pops open a few inches and then you can push it open the rest of the way. It's not full on Rolls Royce where it opens completely on its own. If you wanna close it all the way, you can either push this button right here or lock the vehicle and tap the door handle. But since the keys are inside, we're not gonna do that today. All right, new G90, 21 inch wheels. I do like some of Genesis's new wheel designs. They're pretty striking. Very aerodynamic new shape with this G90. This only has a drag coefficient of 0.27. Very slippery. Flush mounted door handles. A new front grille, new front end. Pretty striking design in my opinion. I love what Genesis is doing with some of their new cars. They're unique. They're not really trying to copy anyone else. They're forging their own path, finally, which I think is a wonderful thing. Let's check out the trunk space. Pretty cold, pretty icy out today. Kind of a nasty week in terms of weather, so trying to keep this thing as clean as possible. Nice looking trunk space for a full-size luxury sedan. Let's see, underneath here, we get a tire inflation kit, no spare, but no surprises today in most vehicles. Really clean design, lots of flush mounted surfaces. The panel gaps look really nice. The integration of these fenders is really unique. I love this line right here with the hood. Pretty stunning looking luxury sedan. In the back seat, things start to get a little bit interesting. Lots of space back here. You got a nice big center console, armrest with a screen. Let's actually hop over to the passenger side. Is this gonna close? There we go. Because <laughs> the passenger side is where you really get all the luxury features. Full recline, you can control the front passenger seating position. You have heated, ventilated, massage seats, window screens with pretty much full coverage. You can control both window screens from each rear passenger side. We've got seat controls down here control our front passenger seat too and there's a very neat feature where you could just go into rest full recline mode though you do have to hold the button and this will basically just turn into an armchair it takes a minute for the front seat to move all the way forward There we go. <laughs> and one nice thing is if you open the door, you wanna get out, it all resumes and resets pretty quickly. And then you have more redundant buttons here to close your doors. Pretty neat. There's a reset button here too. Again, you have to hold it. Lots of controls in the center display here. You can pretty much control everything in the interior from lighting, to radio, to climate, to all the shades and screens. There's another wireless charging element back here. 
And then if you really want to, you can flip this up and have room for a fifth passenger, though I think for most people this is going to stay down the majority of the time. A couple more cup holders down there, as well as a little 12 volt outlet with a USB-C port. Not a lot of space to put things in the door sills, but that's okay. Oh, and then here is your mechanical door opening switch right down there. forged carbon. <laughs> Something that you're probably more used to seeing in high-end exotic sports cars and supercars, but it's here in this Jetta SG90 as kind of a trim appointment. It would be interesting to see what this looks like with some wood trim, but the forged carbon does add a sporty flair to things. Of course, Substitute Tover just reviewed the new 7 Series. There's no massive entertainment screen right here. But we do get a 23 speaker, 1700 watt Bang & Olufsen sound system, which we will definitely have to test a little bit later. Pillow headrests, very comfortable seats back here, tons of space, and uh, it's always nice to be able to control that front passenger seat. A feature that we've seen in Genesis products dating all the way back to the Hyundai Equus, one of the first press cars that I ever tested and uh, filmed. For Winding Road Magazine back in 2012, 2011. Michelin Primacy Tour All Season Tires. Pretty large front brakes. Let's take a look under the hood at this 3.5 liter twin turbo. If you're just opening and closing the doors normally, it can be a little bit. There's a bit more resistance in the motor. Look at this massive hood piece. Wow. That is enormous. That's got to be one of the largest single hood panels on sale today. MPG is rated for 17 miles to the gallon in the city, 24 on the highway, for about a 20 MPG combined rating. 3.5 liter turbo GDI and electric supercharger. Electric superchargers have made their way from eBay all the way into mainstream luxury vehicles. And in this G90, it actually works pretty well. Adds a little bit of torque fill. As you heard on startup, there's no starter sound. Again, just engine just kind of rises up to about 600 rpm. All right, so, I mean, besides some of the design changes here, a pretty familiar front seating area from Genesis. We have a new gear selector dial down here, which I actually really like now. It's pretty well separated from this infotainment selector. So we have this different finish on it, and it gives you some haptic feedback when you Engage reverse, it vibrates a little bit. I think this is pretty much the same as what we see in the new GV60. We get heated and ventilated seats, quick access camera button, drive mode selector, options between eco, comfort, and sport. And if you hold the drive mode, it'll put it into chauffeur mode, which just makes us super comfy and soft. It'll also adjust the seat bolsters according to drive mode. Uh, you've got a couple of quick access favorite buttons here on the steering wheel, which you can switch to a number of different settings. Two custom buttons on both sides. Over here to the left, you've got an option to turn off stop start. And since this rides on air suspension, you can set your vehicle height to high if you're doing any winter driving or light off-roading. More massage functions over here, three seat memory settings. You can also control the passenger seats. Here's your button to open and close your doors. Really closes with some vigor there. Fully digital instrument cluster. We have this kind of touch button here that we've seen in some Mercedes products in the past. We have three different display options here. We can choose between navigation, our fuel economy, and then this just general driving assistance page. Down here we have some physical controls for climate and then constant screen controls for interior perfume. Heated steering wheel 
and of course your heated seats. I don't really like how the heated steering wheel controls and your heated seat controls are in separate places. And also every time you start with the vehicle, it won't remember your last setting. So you'll have to reset everything to where it was in terms of heated steering wheel, heated seats, ventilated seats. Um, there might be a setting for that deep in the menu somewhere where it will resume, but I haven't really delved into it too deeply this week. Really responsive and quick infotainment here. You can also use it as a touchscreen. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, as you'd expect. I like that there's a home button, though no wireless connection to CarPlay and Android Auto, which is a bit of an oversight. And oh yeah, this costs $100,000 in, uh, in this trim. All right, I think that's a pretty decent walk around. There are lots and lots of features in this G90. Uh, we were not gonna show you all of them today, but let's take this for a drive. And actually first, let's start off by showing you what this thing is capable of with that rear wheel steer. The turning radius here is ridiculous. It's actually a little bit unnerving because the steering ratio is so quick. This thing pretty much turns on a dime. Clean our windshield just a little bit here. There we go. Incredibly smooth and seamless shifts from this 8-speed automatic. Barely hear this 3.5 liter V6 per away if you're just cruising around normally. I like the driving position. There's plenty of adjustment with seating position, steering wheel height. All mechanically operated, of course. Turn on our heated steering wheel. As far as snow traction goes, these Michelins aren't the best on ice and snow, but they get the job done. You can see our power distribution here from the all-wheel drive system and a display down to the right. here is great especially with the rear wheel steer I won't be pushing it too much around corners today since it's a bit greasy and pretty cold outside get our signature turn signal cameras on both sides in this G90 something we've seen in a lot of higher-end Hyundai Kia and Genesis products over the years actually a really nice feature We have highway driving assist. Works great as it does on a lot of Genesis products. It'll automatically change lanes for us. Super easy to adjust on a moment's notice. Let's initiate a lane change here. Wanting us to keep our hands on the steering wheel and it's gonna keep the turn signal going until we've made the lane change. Pretty cool. Works great, no major complaints with the system this week. It's done a nice job in a variety of driving scenarios, especially on the highway. That's really where it excels. We'll turn the system off. It's easy to disengage everything. I really gotta give Genesis credit here. They've done such a good job making this an ergonomically friendly luxury sedan where we've seen some steps backwards from BMW and Mercedes lately in terms of usability uh, in exchange for tech and screens and crazy features that maybe don't necessarily make it a more luxurious experience but make it a more complicated driving experience. Here Genesis has kept things simple and to the point and I really appreciate living with this car on a daily basis because it's I think a little bit more relaxing than some of its competitors I don't feel like I'm getting information overload in this G90. It's a bit more of a classic luxury car experience. Let's put 
this into sport mode here. We can feel our seat bolsters tighten up a little bit. With paddle shifters behind the wheel. Hear that V6 kind of purr away in the background. A little bit more engine noise in sport mode. Quick shifts there from that eight-speed auto. Let's hold the drive mode selector and go into chauffeur mode. The side bolsters relax on the seats. The ride gets super comfortable, kind of floaty. The loudest thing in this cabin is the turn signal. Really quiet at speed. Back into sport mode. Not a good day for windshield wipers. Actually pretty impressed with the handling here. And it's no slouch, even though this weighs about 5,100 pounds, 5,156 to be exact, it gets around a corner very, very well. One of the more interesting keys that I've seen from Genesis, kind of light and cheap feeling, even though it looks really cool. You've got functionality here for park in, park out, auto start, lock, unlock, all that good stuff. As you would expect from any luxury vehicle, your feedback from the brake pedal, steering, it's all a bit distant, but it suits the car. It matches the personality of this G90. While we're just cruising here on the highway, let's go in and test out this 1700 watt, 23 speaker, Bang & Olufsen sound system.
this Bing & Olufsen sounds fantastic. Definitely worthy of a $100,000 luxury vehicle. Um, no complaints with that. All right, guys, so some final thoughts on the new Genesis G90. I think this is a pretty significant update and refresh for this car. I'm pretty impressed with the way this thing drives, the way it feels, the way it makes you feel. It's been a pretty enjoyable vehicle to live with all week. Uh, a couple oversights. I, I would like to see wireless CarPlay from a flagship vehicle of this type, something that hopefully Genesis and Hyundai can start implementing into more of their models soon. Uh, minor complaint though, minor gripe. The rest of this car though is really outstanding. I think it drives as well as some of the competitors and it's just a little bit easier to live with than let's say the S-Class for example. I uh, haven't driven the new 7 Series. I think that's pretty much in a class of its own these days. But as a full package, it looks good. It drives amazingly well. And for $100,000, pretty much even hundred grand, I think it offers pretty good value too, which isn't necessarily a term that's synonymous with any vehicles in this class. It's not the fastest luxury sedan out there, but its power delivery is so smooth and seamless that I think I could forgive it a little bit of that. I'm curious to see if they'll come out with an electric version of this G90 soon. We just drove the G80 electric and I was really impressed with that powertrain. That was just such a nice mid-size luxury sedan. And uh, I think really the only improvements that could be made to this G90 would be uh, electrification. It's very nice to see Genesis coming out with their own designs, really kind of forging their own path in terms of interior quality, exterior design. I think this is a very unique offering. And uh, unless if you require one of the German name badge offerings, um, I'd kind of have this over a new Lexus LS 500. I think it drives better. It's a bit more of a cohesive luxury package. And I'd have it over some of the Germans too, just because this is just a bit more livable and uh, it still offers a lot of the same features and functionality. So yeah, top marks to the new G90. Definitely enjoyed my week in this. Thanks for watching guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.